Nikki Haley declares that Joe Biden is prone to expire in life earlier before he hits 86. Republican high-level official for the candidacy of the office of the president Nikki Haley has unequivocally described Biden as won't be able to make it to the end of another tenure in the Oval Office in the White House. Biden broadcasted his bid to the White House for the second term in 2024. He would be 86 at the end of his last tenure that makes him the oldest president ever in the history of America. Nikki Haley said, and I quote, He announced that he's running again in 2024, and I think that we can all be very clear and say with a matter of fact that if you vote for Joe Biden you really are counting on a President Harris, because the idea that he would make it until 86 years old is not something that I think is likely. Ms. Haley mentioned it in a conversation with Fox News on Thursday. She was suggesting that Biden's second-in-command, Kamala Harris, who would succeed Biden in case he passed on during his term in office. The deputy president highlighted conspicuously in a video which outdoored Biden's reappointment proposal. The White House released a direct reply to Ms. Haley's remarks, NBC News recounted and broadcasted. Assistant Media Administrator Andrew Bates said, and I quote, as you know, we don't directly respond to campaigns from here. But honestly, I forgot she was running. Some Democratic voters have indicated they would prefer he not run, in part because of his age, concerns Mr. Biden himself has called totally legitimate. The latest survey from the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research indicated and depicted just 47% of Democrats said they prefer him to pursue a next term, up from 37% in February. Joe Biden declared this at a joint news press briefing with the South Korean leader Yoon suk yeol on Wednesday and I quote with regard to age, I can't even say, I guess, how old I am. I can't even say the number. It doesn't register with me. I took a hard look at it before I decided to run. And I feel good. His video broadcasting his official submission illustrates him jogging in his suit. Previous US President in Trump announced his tertiary submission for the premiership in November. As it stands, forecasters project a Biden-Trump 2024 election battle is probable, in a rerun of their contest for the White House in 2020. Ms. Haley, who worked as a United Nations diplomat under Mr. Trump's past government, turned out to be the second Republican candidate to throw her hat into the ring after her former boss. The 51-year-old ex-South Carolina governor is perceived as an outcast. She publicized her resolution to take part in February, saying and I quote it was the time and season for a new generation of leadership to rediscover fiscal responsibility, secure our border, and strengthen our country, our pride and our purpose. Emeritus Deputy President Mike Pence is also purportedly considering a conceivable contest to Mr. Trump for the Republican presidential candidate nomination. On Thursday, he appeared before a federal grand jury looking into Mr. Trump's responsibility in determination to reverse the 2020 election, according to the account. 24 conversation, uh, people characterize Ron DeSantis as sort of the Trumpiness without the Trump chaos. So, of course, he would start to become a viable alternative to the former president. The former president's team recognize that and are trying to bludgeon him as much as possible, even before he makes a decision to formally run, which we expect to happen sometime next month. Um, and the problem for DeSantis right now is that he can't really fight back. You know, he is not an official candidate. He does. Uh, there is an affiliated super PAC uh, defending him and promoting him, but that's not a campaign operation. So perhaps if and when he becomes a candidate, the, the numbers do change a little. He is able to fight back, but he hasn't. Uh, no one has really taken the the opportunity to bludgeon Trump because they're all afraid of the Trump voters, afraid of angering the base. That, that, that's the key point. If you're trying to be Trump without the drama, which is the DeSantis MO in this campaign, attacking Trump might cost you more votes than it gets you, which is why it's hard. He's also in this big fight with Disney. Uh, he's trying to take away uh, essentially government autonomy Disney has over its land. That's a bit of an overstatement, but relative autonomy Disney has over its land. DeSantis says it shouldn't exist anymore because he doesn't like some of Disney's policies. He calls them too woke. Disney is now suing the governor. Uh, governor DeSantis is in Israel today, part of an international tour, and he says the suit is bogus. I don't think the suit has merit. I think it's political. They're upset because they're actually having to live by the same rules as everybody else. The idea that somehow uh, being pro-business means giving companies their own governments, that is not what a free market is all about. Uh, that is a response to a lot of the conservative criticism. have said, why, Governor, are you trying to use the power of the government against this private business? There, at least, is an attempt at an answer. And, I mean, I think the answer makes sense until you realize that Ron DeSantis was fine with allowing Disney to have its own government until Disney started doing things politically that Ron DeSantis didn't agree with. 
Florida Republicans and Democrats have for decades been okay with this setup that allows Disney to essentially govern itself in its own property. So the lawsuit that Disney has filed is basically saying that, that the new policies, the new oversight, the new structures that Ron DeSantis has put into place is not about good government. It's about punishing the company and its leaders for having a political position and expressing their First Amendment rights. And so that's their argument uh, why they say what DeSantis has done is politically motivated, not about good government.